Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. This week, the Hurricanes at home against Central Connecticut State kick off at 12:30 at Hard Rock Stadium. So we look forward to that one, Coach. I'll look back at last week's game. Probably the headline, I guess, uh, when you look at it, is a game of missed opportunities. That's right. It was, um, in a lot of ways, very similar to the App State game the week before. Um, I thought we were in control early. I thought, I thought we had a chance to take a, a, a double-digit lead that would have really put us in control. It would still have been a 60-minute game. Uh, but to be, put pressure on them, uh, make them play from behind. They, they had been ahead all season. They had never really had to play from behind. They had been up 14-0 after the first quarter of their first two contests. Um, and we, you know, we got a chance to go 14-3 uh, with, with the crowd excited and a lot of momentum going our way. And, and it was another one, like we did in the App State game with a penalty, uh, self-inflicted wound lets them off the hook. Uh, a self-inflicted wound allows them to take a, uh, a bubble screen and break a long play. And then from that point on, it was a back and forth game, a three-point game going to the fourth. Again, very similar to App State. Uh, the difference this time was that they made the winning plays down the stretch, two crucial turnovers. Uh, that made the score look the way it was. Coach Will Mallory had an opportunity to score a touchdown, put Miami in a great position, and he doesn't, drops the pass, and then the missed field goal, or penalty, and then the missed field goal. Just that series right there, it seemed like it was it had an opportunity to really put Miami ahead. Well, it, it did, and, and, and that's why we wanted to, you know, create adversity for them, you mm -hmm. know, and make them play from behind. They were having a really hard time protecting their quarterback at that time. They really hadn't gotten a whole lot going on offense and um, you know it's just an empty possession you know when you get down there like that 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 really hurts and that's been a that's been a theme you know red zone production when we get down there close um, but there was still a lot of ball left to be played I mean that's something that we've got to be able to overcome and and uh, and we didn't do a good enough job of, of mentally refocusing after that to, to be able to see it through yeah, a 14-3 game probably puts that game midway into the third quarter with a Miami lead because of the way the game was going um, I know there are a lot of things you want to work on. We'll talk about during the show. Uh, you mentioned the miss, we mentioned the missed opportunities in scoring. I found this interesting today. University of Miami, you've run the third most plays inside the ACC, but have scored only five touchdowns. 222 plays and five touchdowns. Uh, plays inside the red zone? No, just or plays. Just in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, I mean, we can move the ball. Um, right. But the, the score, the number of points we're putting on the scoreboard, um, you know, that's, I think, what we didn't expect coming into the season. We just felt like we'd be, a, we'd be an offense and be able to put up more points than what we've done through the first three weeks. You know, we've, we've played three good defenses, you know, that, that, that have, that have played, made it tough on us. But um, no one in this building is, is satisfied with, um, you know, the numbers we're putting up at this point. And, um, you know, at, at, at this point in the season, gives us a chance to really step back and analyze why those things are and what we can do as coaches and, and, and press the players to improve on that. Manny, with four giveaways, it's very difficult to beat anybody at any time. You've got seven giveaways for the season at this point. You only had nine for the whole year last year. That's got to be something you're going to focus on heavily. That's going to be a big point this week, uh, all week. Um, and, and the same thing with taking the ball away on defense. We, we are not disrupting the ball like we should, and we're certainly not uh, protecting the ball like we should. And, 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 and you, you hit it right on the head. I mean, if you're minus four, you're going to lose – that game, that you can pull up a million data points that are going to tell you everything else is almost irrelevant. Um, the fact that it was a tight game, you know, two of those turnovers happened in the fourth quarter. That's why the score looked the way that it looked, and, and, and a close game became a not close game uh, at the end. But, uh, you know, that comes down to a lot of things, you know, uh, protecting our quarterback, you know, and protecting the ball when we run. There were some things that we felt like um, we weren't doing a great job with ball security, and, you know, you, you say it, you say it, and then all of a sudden the game proves it. Um, but that's got to be a habit that is formed in, in practice, um, should have already been formed. Uh, we got to crank up the heat on reinforcing that. I know particularly frustrating for you has to be the tackling, because you take great pride in tackling. You, the University of Miami has been a hard-nosed physical team tackling. This year it's been a struggle. Why do you think the tackling is, has been uh, a struggle, and, and then what can you do to fix it? Well, the, the disappointing part with the tackling is it, it improved against App State. Our number dropped way down versus App State from where it was against Alabama. And then the number went way back up. Um, two thirds of our missed tackles occurred in the second half of the game. Um, and the big thing that shows up on tape was, it, and, and, and the other thing is, it's guys that have tackled. You know, it's guys that, have, that they've got a career of putting guys on the ground. It's similar to, to, you know, some of the drops on offense. I mean, if this yeah. was, you know, 
um, guys that you know couldn't do it, they, they can do it. Um, so we watched every missed tackle as an entire defense together, every one. And it wasn't, you know, I would say tackling doesn't care about your feelings. It is, it is not an art. It is a science. There is a science. It is, it, is, it is human physics to get a person to the ground and understanding your power versus their power and how to stop their, their momentum and, and, and wrap them to the ground. And too often their runners had their cleats still on the ground pumping their legs. And our tacklers had our cleats out of the ground, you know, and whether we're, 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 we, we, you lose your ground-based power, even if you're wrapped up, you're wrapped up, but you have no power and, and, uh, and guys are running through our tackles. So, um, uh, you know, you, we were all limited in terms of the ability to bring people to the ground. We, we drill bringing fellow defenders to the ground, but, you know, it's hard to bring your offense players to the ground during the season. That's not a Miami thing. That's the way it is everyone in college ball and the National Football League. Um, but we've got some things that we're working on this week to spice up our tackling let's just say uh that we're not going to be represented by a poor tackling outfit and uh and that will eventually also affect guys who play and don't play coach chance williams is every week he shows up and I, and that's defensive talk do you want people that show up and it's nice to see him starting to come around yeah and ball disruptive plays which we said mm -hmm. we need more of you know he, he seems like he bats a ball down every week um had a big sack like i said early on i mean it was a mismatch every time they drop back and throw the ball. They, they didn't complete a pass to a wide receiver downfield until the fourth quarter, and only two for the whole game. It was, it was an extraordinary game in a lot of ways, um, uh, but, but guys like Chance coming along, the defensive line played very well. Um, Michigan State did a nice job of really neutralizing our defensive line by playing the game on the perimeter, uh, making the ball cut back to our secondary, and, 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 and uh, neutralizing our pass rush with screens. Uh, probably the other issue uh, we need to address a little bit, the penalties have hurt. Uh, seven, about seven penalties a game, but there were some critical penalties in the game the other day that took away the momentum. How do you, how do you solve that one? That's a, a tricky one. Yeah, well, number one, we disciplined all penalties. That, that, it was a very over, I would say over-officiated game, but Michigan State had 10 penalties. Yeah. I mean, there, there were a lot of things that were just going to get called in that game, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, so we had been better in penalties the first two weeks, you know. I mean, about six a game, if you look at the national stats, is kind of I mean, if you're if you're somewhere around six a game, that's usually pretty good. What we talk about is what kind of penalties are they? Are they are they pre-snap penalties, the ones that you really can avoid? Um, are they post-snap penalties at the 15 yarder for a guy just getting emotional, you know, and acting out on his feelings? Sometimes, if you're an aggressive football team, penalties are going to happen during the course of a play. Um, uh, what I see is when I see holding penalties, I see guys that aren't moving their feet, which again is about bringing your feet. Same thing with the physicality of tackling. Um, you know, those are the ones that, that, that we can fix and, and get cleaned up. I got to bring some levity because, uh, you know, I go on my soapbox every now and then. But one of the overlooked things in this game was you were driving down the field when Mallory dropped the ball. That sequence really uh, came unhinged after the officials took about five minutes to sort out that Michigan State had too many men on the field. And so the trade-off was they gave you five yards, yet – it allowed Michigan State to kind of regroup and took De'Eric. I think it took your offense out of a rhythm. Would you like to see, without getting fined here, but sometimes you just got to let the game go, right? Yeah, that, that was a long time to, to figure out what everybody in the stands already knew that they had, they had 12. It, it has nothing to do with where they spotted the ball and, um, and whatnot. But, you know, look, teams are going to use different ways. You saw with Michigan State. Teams are going to do different ways to try to slow us down. Uh, it magically always seems to happen when the ball gets to about their 30-yard line. Um, you know, you got to be used to it. A lot of times it just means that, that what you're doing bothers them and it's working. Coach, Derek King, 59 attempts, I believe it is. I mean, that's, that's a boatload. And, but the thing I noticed after the game in the locker room is we always talk about leaving it on the field. He left every ounce, every drop that a, a human being could leave on a football field. Yeah. And what an inspiration to this team. That guy um, cares more about this place and this program um, is one of the most, I mean, devoted, dedicated football players I've ever been around. I mean, he would do anything for anybody in this program to help us win a football game. Um, 59 pass attempts is probably too many mm -hmm. for any quarterback to throw in a game. Score has something to do with that at the end, but that's, that's a lot of times to, to drop back into the ball. Not that they're all drop backs and our play action RPOs, things like that. Um, the guy's special. I mean, that fourth down that he went out there and, and, and just dove and, and, and gave his body up, I mean, that, that, guy is, that guy's a legend in my opinion. Yeah, that was, that was an incredible play, the fourth down where he uh, leaped forward and really took a blow. How do you uh, – he's banged up pretty good, so how do you manage him this week and what, how do you uh, manage his status also? Well, right now we listen to what the doctors say. 
You know what I mean? I mean, they examine him like we do with all of our players. You know, coaches don't make decisions on injuries. Um, try to get a sense of, you know, what his availability would be for this weekend. Um, in the meantime, um, that's why we were all excited about, about Tyler and Jake all off season. Uh, those guys have worked hard that know that there was a, you know, there, we thought there was a chance last Saturday, you know, you know, one of those guys would have to go into the game. So they get a chance to compete all week in practice. And if, if they get called upon this weekend against Central Connecticut State, they get a chance to show everybody what they can do and, and show our team. And I think our team believes in both guys. And, um, you know, if they get in there, our, our standard of expectation of how we move the ball and score on offense doesn't change. Coach, you have to give Michigan State credit, of course. You told us a week ago that their quarterback was a, was a special guy. But Walker, the running back, 170 plus yards and very, very talented. I mean, came out of the ACC, was at Wake Forest yeah. and transferred in. Yeah, I thought Walker was uh, the best player on the field. I, I, I thought, I thought mm -hmm. his, he, he made the difference. Um, him and the quarterback have changed them from what they were a year ago, you know, which we've seen that with, with transfers and how that can happen. Um, but, uh, but, but again, we helped. Let's just say, you know, we certainly helped the quarterback. You know, he had a big scramble there at the end where we could have done a better job rushing the passer on a third down. Um, and, and again, wrap, wrapping up the running back on some of those plays is just, it's just fundamentals. Okay, it's Miami coming up on Saturday against Central Connecticut State. We'll talk a little bit about that game and how that game can help the University of Miami. We will continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. Hello, I'm the Good Greek Spiro, and I have some very exciting news. Good Greek Moving and Storage is launching our Welcome Home program. Book your next move with Good Greek and you will receive our housewarming package, which includes gift cards valued at over $1,000, along with a neighborhood guide as you discover your new favorite local businesses. For the best move ever and to receive your exclusive gift offer, visit goodgreek.com and welcome home. Greek, moving and storage, your superhero movers. Sure are a lot of different drivers out there, and AutoNation is here for every one of them. The ten and twoers, the big fellas, nothing but the besters, even rock stars. But we do way more than sell new and pre-owned vehicles. We believe in something bigger, too. For every vehicle we sell or service, we donate to Drive Out Cancer. Over $28 million so far. What drives you, drives us. Auto Nation.